Hey guys, Dan here. Today we are talking about breaks and how to avoid what you just saw in the intro clip. I would say a correct braking technique and a correctly configured brake is probably the most important thing if you want to improve and shape up those seconds from your lap time. So this video won't be about the braking technique, we might cover that in a later guide, but I'm going to show you how to get a more usable range out of your brake pedal and it will actually also make it much harder to lock up the tires under braking. This is especially useful for lower end pedals without a load cell or for pedals with weaker load cells, like for example I'm using the Heusingwell sprint pedals and I think the load cell it could be a little bit beefier, it's easy to max out the pedals and I was thinking about hmm, how can I maybe improve the braking for me. But before we get into that I'd like to invite you to our discord server. We have a very nice and helpful community over there with nearly 2000 members so if you just want to chat or if you have any questions related to sim racing or streaming or anything else Feel free to join, the link is in the description below of course. And also I'm streaming on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday and I would love to see you there. Okay, back to the brakes. Uh, the problem with iRacing is that the calibration of the pedals are kinda lackluster. You can calibrate everything just fine, but you can't even set a dead zone or anything afterwards. You have to do that manually in the config files, I show you how to do that. Also you probably noticed if you drive any car without ABS that you can lock up really easily. Sometimes a brake pedal input of like 70% is already enough to lock up the tires, so you kinda can only use the first 70% of your brake pedal's range, because locking up is definitely something that you shouldn't do in a race car. So why not calibrate the pedals in a way that we map our whole pedal range? to a brake input range of about 80% in game, so we will lose the last 20% of the brake input, but you never ever need those. By doing that we map our 100% pedal range to a 80% in-game brake input range and we get a higher resolution of braking. And on the plus side it will also be much harder to lock up, because if you just smash the pedal to the metal you still only brake with about 80% of the maximum theoretically available brake pressure. In other simulations you can often configure that, you can configure the brake pressure or something, but for whatever reason iRacing does not have this feature. But yeah, let's get into the rig and I will show you how to configure the brakes. Alright, so we will start with a fresh calibration, therefore you will need to delete your old one, you just go to um, a documents folder, so documents iRacing, and then we have this joycalib.yaml. So just rename it to, to something like old or so, then start iRacing obviously. We're just going to use the test drive, sentry pedal circuit. Okay, in the session we go to options and just calibrate the pedals regularly, throttle done, brake done. Um, yeah, we don't really need the clutch but whatever, done, done, okay. And if I now show you the input widget, let's put it over here. It's just regularly calibrated brake, you can see 100% of brake available. And if you brake too much, it will lock up the tires. Pretty much, yeah, we all know it, right? Okay, but what we want to do now is uh, get out of the car, get out of the session. And now iRacing generated a new joycalib.yaml. Okay, what you need to do is open this joycalib with a, with a text editor of your choice. And you will see these are the pedals. Z rotation, Y rotation, X rotation. If you have three axes, the brake will be the one in the middle. And you can see calibration minimum is zero. That's the raw value it gets from the pedals. It sets this to zero. And calibration max is 4095. And what we will do now is we will trick the game into thinking that the raw values actually go higher. So for example, if we if we tell the game, okay, your, your maximum value is 5000, but we can just hit 4000 something with the pedals. And iRacing will think, okay, we got 4,000, so that is about 80% of 5,000. Not about, it's exactly, uh, you know. <laughs> and uh, that way your full brake pedal range from the pedals mapped to 80% in-game. So um, you can also do this like really 
exactly by using a calculator. You just go 4095 and let's say you want to use 77% of maximum break input. You divide it by 0 0.77. That would be 5318. Uh, so just change this to 5318. And now your maximum break input will be 77%. Also one thing that is worth mentioning, if you want to set a dead zone, you can do it by just increasing this calibration minimum value. So for example, if you set it to like 100, then you can easily rest your foot on the brakes and don't get any input. But we'll leave it like this for now. I'm gonna save it and load the test drive again. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, there we go, options, and now when you see if I press the brake to the maximum that is available, it will just stop at 77% at now. I mean, you, you, you don't need 100% of brake input in any car that I know. And for example, on the GTEs, it's maybe a maximum of 70, 75%, maybe. After that, it's just locking up and we don't need that. So by, by doing this little, I don't really want to call it trick, it's just long calibrating the pedals, other games have an option for that iRacing just doesn't give us anything for for the calibration uh, by doing that you can use more of your brake pedal in an actual range that you can use in game and on the plus side it is now much harder to lock up the brakes so if we just drive around a bit i mean 77 percent should still lock up the brakes but yeah no it doesn't So full, full on the brakes, and you can see we don't lock up, lock up anymore. I can I can show you the, the widget again. So yeah, even here it's it's like seventy seven percent of maximum. You gotta be careful when you try try this. Uh, some cars probably all cars it's also dependent on how much maximum brake pressure you can use depending on how fast you are as if you go faster you have more downforce you can apply a higher brake pressure uh, but if you set it to i, I use 80 percent on all cars if you set it to something like that you're on the safe side if you really want to take this to the limit and have an individual parameter for each car that's also possible what you want to do is go to options and tick use custom controls for this car and then you actually need to go to your setups channel and then bmw and then you have the joycalib.yaml in the setup channel and that would be the custom controls for each car so if you open that with a text editor you have exactly the same again so if you set it here to like let's say 6000 or so then for this car your maximum brake input would be even lower so um, you could play around test what do i actually need and then set it to that value if you actually use uh, for example the housing belt pedals they have a very nice software for that so as you can see brake curve type and there we have a mapping from input to output so when you calibrate your pedals as done done when you recalibrate it, it overrides the changes you made, so you gotta be careful with that. But now, you can see 100%, okay. And if I load my profile here, iRacing, yes, well, maybe not click on cancel. Import, I have a mapping from, uh, it's a little non-linear, and 100% is mapped to 80%, so if I save that to the pedals now, and go to maximum, it's basically doing exactly the same. So yeah, play around with it. And I think it's definitely an advantage because you don't lock up so easily and you can actually use the whole range of your pedals in, in a usable way. If you have pedals with a super strong load cell, I don't know, Housing Weld Ultimate or something, it's probably not necessary to do that. But if you don't have a load cell or, or even this, I mean, this has a 65% load cell, it's super easy to max this out. Okay, and if you want to set the, the maximum brake 
pressure, maximum allowed brake pressure per car and you have no idea to what values it's set it to and you're subscribed to one of the setup shops, you can easily check the telemetry from them. Just check what maximum brake pressure the driver uses in the fast lap if you watch the telemetry, super easy to figure out. For example, VRS, BMW at uh, Road America it is currently, no, Sebring. I think it's 78%, so like I said, usually 80% works for nearly all the cars, but play around with that. All right, so I hope this helps. Try it out, play around with the maximum brake settings and let me know in the comments down below if it worked for you. It's also not only interesting for cars without ABS because on iRacing the ABS is actually modeled pretty badly. If you use the ABS you will lose braking performance and shred your tires so yeah. I would recommend to use it there as well. I personally just set uh, my brake input to a maximum of 80% on all cars. You can probably optimize that a lot, but I haven't really played around with that yet. So for an example, in the Audi R8 GT3 car, you can get as low as 65% maximum. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you found this helpful, hit the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications. That would, that would be awesome. Guys, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video or in Twitch chat maybe. Bye bye. White Mirror Rouge again. Already looking forward for freebie. That's no. Ah, no, I'm the freebie. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, how do you even lose the car here? I don't know.